Rightio, here we go. This is the first video in a big series of how we converted our GXL Land Cruiser into an ultimate touring dual cab beast. So oh, I'll show you a quick look at my old rig, right? This is the Mazda BT50. It's been a butte car and pretty much the new car is just a massive version of this. So come inside and I'll show you. Over the next five or six vids, we are gonna take you through how we do it, how we planned it, how we built it, how it got cut in half. The power mods done to it, you know what I mean? The canopy, the bar work, the battery system, everything that I've learned over the last four years and a lot of good info from the bloke behind the camera who is Caleb yeah, from Pro Touring that. Concepts. <laughs> Couldn't have done any of this without him. So yeah, come in here, good. we'll have a quick look at the, the rig, mate. Um, she's almost finished, almost finished. But this is, you gotta remember, this is vid one. We're taking you back to the very start, so I can't show you anymore. Hello, cheers, man. Cheers, mate. There we go. Made it. <laughs> well, no, so the first episode in the build series, and we're going to answer a lot of questions for you. Mm. Biggest one being uh, that I get from everyone ever since we started this build is why I cut a perfectly good 200 series wagon in half, right? Uh -huh. Well, I know. Uh -huh. It's a big call. There it is. You know, it's they're an expensive call. car, mate. They're 80 grand plus. We uh -huh. saved a little bit with luxury car tax. We'll explain that later on. But it's a big call. Yeah. And you gotta have a good reason to do it. So that's what we're gonna explain in this first vid. I'm gonna get out the how, the when, the why, and uh, what our needs were in actually creating this dual cab beast behind us. I know it's, mm -hmm. it's hidden in the background, because it's the first vid. Uh, you'll see it as we go on. We're gonna explain each stage on its own and answer all those questions you're gonna have along the way. So stay yes. tuned for the rest of the build series because it's gonna be sick. But. Mm -hmm. If you've followed our series over the last few years, you'd know that we travel Australia full time. I've got a young family, uh, I've got a car and a caravan, and I've got a lot of gear. That's all we have. We don't have a house, we don't have a shed, we don't have anything else. We live on the road full time. So the reasons for us needing a big payload are pretty genuine. And as our travels evolve from a 12 month lap of Oz into now our fifth year traveling, mm. creating a, a YouTube series, a TV series along the way. I need a lot of gear. And well, I'm trying to justify that to the missus, but basically it's just because <laughs> I wanted to take a boat too, yeah? Yeah, cool as <laughs> And how cool is that? Yeah. But yeah. it comes down basically as a lot of, Caleb's gonna tell you, a lot of his customers, including me, they need to have a big GVM and a big towing capacity. Yes. Well, yeah, that's tr that's right. Like, if you want to take half of the sort of the gear that Justin wants to take with him, yeah. then we need to work out, uh, firstly, for one, how much gear you want to take, and if a tinny is important as well, or a roof tent, or two or three fridges. Um, how big's your van? What's yeah, your tow ball yeah, capacity? Yeah. All that sort of stuff. All the weights, capacities, initially, before just going gung-ho and going with this GVM, this conversion, this cruiser, um, we need to work that out with There's a lot you that goes first, into it. yeah, and we yeah. sort of knew based on what Justin and Beck were doing in the BT that a 200, um, it's a bigger car, it also weighs more, um, so it's going to need as big a GVM as we can as get. possible. So, uh, to give you a bit of a baseline, a standard 200 series GVM is 3350, mm. that's for a standard 200 wagon. Now, to put that in perspective, let's think about two adults, three kids a set of drawers, a dual battery system, a bull bar and a fridge, we're already over our GVM. Yes, well, that's without, well over. Well yeah. over, that's without putting mm. the tow ball weight of a caravan on. So I think there's a, a lot of people think like, yeah, the Land Cruiser, <coughs> they're king of the road, they can handle everything. Well, not legally, no. Uh, there's really a lot of limitations mm. and the biggest one is their GVM. Great car, but you need a lot of upgrades to actually get it to where we need it to be. Yeah. So yeah. this is where we've come to. So we're going to explain all that sort of stuff now. We'll get into that. Um, because our big reason for doing this build is GVM and payload. So who builds the car, mate? So this is Caleb from Pro Touring Concepts, and well, he can't take all the credit because no. he doesn't actually build the car. No, that's but right. But let's put it simply, he's a project manager as if you were going to buy a new house and build something off the plan. This man manages all the trades involved and gives you a turnkey package at the end of it. So. Quickly, mate, run me through the process. So say when I first give you a call mm -hmm. and we have a chat about what I want yep. to when I pick up the car, yep. what happens? Uh, well, firstly, we work, we walk through with you what you actually need, weights, capacities, car, yep. wagon, chop, 79, whatever, we figure that out. We purchase the car for you. Uh, it will then arrive at 
the conversion company that we've chosen for you, whether mm -hmm. it be AV, Creative, whatever, um, the conversion takes place. Once it's done the conversion, it will then go to DPU in Mackay for the performance modifications. Mm -hmm. um, that can range quite a lot. Uh, we go from DPU down to um, ARB in Burley on the Gold Coast, which is just around the corner from us, uh, where the, the bar work, we put the winch in it, put the rhino rack, um, all the, those little odds and ends in it at, at there on the Gold Coast. Um, then we take it and we do a certain bit of work to it before we then take it up to Brisbane to put the canopy on the back. Brisbane being Norwell, Norwell, yep. Norwell um, they're obviously manufactured in cans, Canopies have come down to Brisbane, we take it up, we liaise with Norworld, fit it up, make it so it's schmicko like every other one. Then we bring it back down to us. The car generally would spend about three to four weeks with us, mm -hmm. tying in tint, floor mats, electrical, all the electrical, as in underbonnet electrical, canopy electrical, uh, Almax, roof tents, wheels, tyres, everything that makes the car compliant. Yep. Um, and then it's handover. And it's handover. Pretty much. Yes. So that's yeah, it. That's so it. So there you go. The, the big reason that we went with the bloke like Caleb is that, like, the, obviously we can't control all that. We travel full time. And, and I think a lot of other people, just in their normal everyday <coughs> life, you've got jobs, you've got kids, you've got school, all that sort of stuff. You don't have time to actually chase up all that research and actually project manage a build like this. So yeah. to be able to send it to a fella that knows what he's doing, who's done it before, who has the context, the contacts, um, and can just make it flow yeah. and it's make it work. It's taken us a little while to get that procedure right. Yeah. And it's still, there is a lot of work in the background to get it done, but it's it's just how we've, um, over the time, we've yeah. managed to perfect it and now it's just works. It's a perfectly. seamless operation. So, so you make a phone call, mm. you pay the invoices, and then you yeah. pick up a sick rig like the one behind us. So, mm. happy days. Yeah. Right, so one of the big questions is going to be why didn't we just buy an off-the-shelf American truck, a Ram, an F truck, a Silverado, something like that. Well, to be honest, um, I just don't bloody like them for one reason. I have driven them and I've researched them. Uh, to me, they're big, they're bulky, they'll feel weird to drive. The bonnets come up here to your forehead. Like they're just, they're, and it's so much different to anything you have or have driven before in Australia. And then once you do your research, um, the payload, the GVM, and the towing capacity, yes, it's great on paper, but is it really gonna work when you wanna set it up as a full-time ultimate beast like this with canopy, bar work, rooftop tinny, and a big van? Is it gonna work? It, well, it can work. It just is, is gonna cost you a lot more yeah. to get into that same sort of category. So let's stick um, with like why. Like let's, how hard is it to get parts for an American truck? A lot harder. How, how many people in Australia know how to work on American trucks? <laughs> Not as many. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get a brand new car when it shows up or is it already been well, messed around with to get converted? Well, it, it lands in Australia brand new as an American car and then converted in Australia. Yeah. Um, so technically it's a second-handed car by yeah. the time you get it. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't work out cheaper. For anyone saying that it works out cheaper, it does actually cost you a little bit more to do the same thing that Justin and Beck have done to a 200 series, mm -hmm. it will cost you more to do on a Ram, an F truck, any of those Yank tanks um, to get similar payloads. Yep. So. so what do I take on the road that I need such a big rig and a big GVM? Well, let's, I'll quickly run you through it. We've got a family of five, me and the missus, three kids. Um, we live on the road, we've got a canopy, We've got, it's full of gear. We've got a rooftop tinny, and we've also now got a four and a half ton ATM off-road caravan. So by the time you line all that sort of stuff up, this is why we need this build for us, and it's our ultimate tourer. So not to say everyone needs this, you know, everyone's got different suitabilities and capabilities mm. and requirements for when they hit the road. This is what we need, and this is why we've built this truck to handle everything we can throw at it. So with our rig, we've gone with a 4495 GVM and a four and a half ton brake towing capacity because we've got all the fruit and we need that big payload, but there's other options. Yes, there's creative conversions and AEV. With Justin and Beck's rig, all that load, big van, four and a half ton van, we've used the J-Max clip, which has the, the AEV are the only ones with the SSM approval mm -hmm. to do that conversion. So hence theirs went to Townsville and AEV. Yep. 
If you don't require such big loading and towing, we've got cheaper alternatives, as in Creative Conversions, they offer an 8.2 tonne GCM, yep. which is federal 4.2 GVM and 4.2 tonne towing. There so. you go. Right, that should answer a lot of your questions out of this first vid. And of course, if you've got any more, make sure you drop them in the comments below because I'll get back to you and I'll incorporate that info in future build vids. We've got another five vids coming out explaining the whole process in each stage. Um, and it's a lot of fun, mate. Yeah. It is. So next up, we'll be in Townsville for the Chop Chop, yes. where the whole, the brand new cruiser, it gets shipped up to AV. And the damn thing gets cut in half before I've even driven it. <laughs> this is why we keep telling everyone to wait for the videos. <laughs> Just wait for the videos. You'll see it all happen. All right. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Cheers. So, big question, if you had an unlimited budget and wanted to build an ultimate touring rig, what would you actually build? A ram. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be typically blowing that way. Yeah. I wonder if... Maybe if I move the other side. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's got to look pretty cool, but... <laughs> it does look cool, but I can't... <laughs> 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 yep, I'm just gonna wait for that smoke. Mm -hmm. We're just waiting for the smoke. Next up, we're going to Townsville for a chop chop. Oh, can I speak? Chop chop. <laughs> chop, chop. <laughs> can I hear you? Can you hear me? Do you want to put that other one up there or not? No. No. It's gone. Good it's one. gone due east. Awesome. <laughs> Straight across. Like seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, smoke. I like it. Um, <laughs> if you could build your ultimate tour, mm. which you already have three or four times, mm. what would you build next? <laughs> Probably either a, a Ram 2500 or a 79 series again. Mm. You're We've killing, done. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Money with no object and, and budget was not even a thing on the table. Yep. What would you want to build? What would you build? Chop 200 series. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so with our truck, we've got a 4495 GVM. A GVM. <laughs> right there, mate. <laughs> Can't even see us anymore. It's bloody smoke. Mate, the things we've got to do. <laughs> Do a build series, they said. Be easy, they reckon. 